Once Forgiven, Now Free made a video response to an earlier one of mine in which I asked the question of whether theists could even imagine what a universe without gods would be like. If you haven't seen them, check out the description for links to both videos. I think he's made a number of logical fallacies and unfounded assumptions. See what you think. If there was no God, then there would be no universe. Since God created the universe and the universe is contingent on him, then the universe can't exist without God. Notice that he simply asserts that the universe was created by God. He doesn't even say, this is what I think. No, it's a declaration, as if the matter were proven beyond any reasonable doubt. According to him, It's like asking, what would an effect look like without a cause? But obviously, if there was no cause, then there can't be any effect. Here he implies that the only possible reason for the universe to exist is that the god he believes in created it. How does he know that the concept of cause and effect even apply to the origin of the universe? Sure, everything we see happening in the universe is an effect which can, at least theoretically, be traced back to a cause. But why postulate that the universe itself had a cause? Causes and effects happen within a time frame where cause precedes effect. My understanding of the universe, based on the known laws of physics, is that time itself began at a point nearly 14 billion years ago. So if there was no such thing as a time before that, what sense does it make to even expect there to be a cause? What sense does it make to ask what happened before the beginning of time? It's like asking how cold it is below zero Kelvin. You can't get colder than zero Kelvin, so the question is meaningless. Now back to our theist friend. What would cars look like without car factories? What would houses look like if nobody built them? These questions miss the point. Without a cause, you can't have an effect. And if there was no God, then there would be no universe. Once again, he implies that the only possible explanation for the reason that we are here in this universe is that God did it. I don't understand why he thinks that man-made objects such as houses and cars are comparable with the entire universe. It would only begin to make sense if the multiverse theory turned out to be true, but even if that were the case, it wouldn't be a good reason to believe that the Christian God is real. The universe is here because God created it. But I wouldn't say because of my God, I would just say because of God. He is everyone's God, whether people acknowledge him or not. It's hard to tell whether he's implying that all gods apart from his are false gods, or that all the creator gods are different people's interpretations of one super god. If you're watching this once forgiven now free, perhaps you could clarify. So what makes you think that something else is eternal? What makes you think that the concept of eternity makes any sense at all in the first place? What reason do you have for believing that there is such a thing as eternity? I do believe that the natural world has a supernatural cause. After all, the natural world isn't eternal. You invoke the supernatural. I have to ask the same thing. What evidence do you have to support the idea that there is such a thing as the supernatural? Is it not the case that people once thought that fire was supernatural before they discovered how to make it? People once thought that illness was caused by demon possession. Then they discovered viruses and microorganisms that were invisible prior to the invention of the microscope. The point is that as we learn more and more about this amazing universe and how it works, all of the things we used to call supernatural turned out to have natural explanations. To me, the supernatural seems like a cop-out that people use when they don't like to admit that they don't know something. Nothing can create itself or cause itself to come into existence. So it's only logical to believe that the natural world was caused by something beyond the natural world, or supernatural. I don't think that's particularly logical because it leads to an infinite regress. If what you're saying is true, and given the fact that you like to provide answers to these sorts of questions, what is the cause of the supernatural? A super-supernatural cause? 
While you're thinking about that, I would strongly recommend a video made by Dark Matter 2525, which is called God's God. You'll find a link to it in the description. In my previous video, I asked if theists could even imagine a scenario in which there's no such thing as a supernatural God. Actually, I can't imagine the scenario. It's like trying to imagine a square circle. It's just, it's an illogical concept. I don't see this as being on a par with a square circle, but I accept that's the way you see it. Have you considered the possibility that there might be more to this world than you currently understand? Natural explanations which account for what you call the supernatural. Mundane explanations for what people used to think was magic. The reason I can make sense of natural processes and the laws of physics is because of the Creator. God created this universe and He upholds it in a consistent fashion. That might make sense to you, but it assumes that you're correct about the Christian God, specifically your fundamental interpretation of Him which denies evolution. You seem happy to accept the laws of physics, but not evolution. They're both science, why accept one but not the other? If everything just explored into existence, why do we have laws of physics in the first place? First of all, it's inaccurate to think of the Big Bang as an explosion. To do so would assume that it could be observed from the outside. It's meaningless to think of being outside the universe in the same way as asking about a cause before time, or a temperature below zero Kelvin, or a speed slower than stationary. The Big Bang describes the expansion of space from the beginning of time. It's not like matter is moving apart within pre-existing space. It's the space itself which is doing the expanding. The laws of physics are what we've discovered about how matter and energy interact within space-time. You ask why we have these laws? I don't know. I'm only a person who happens to know a little about physics and astronomy, but is not afraid to admit to having limited knowledge and understanding. I don't think you know either, deep down, but you postulate your God because that gives you comfort and makes sense to you. I can understand how a programmer could create a game and create laws within that virtual world that characters need to follow, but now people like you want to claim that the laws which govern our universe just happen by chance? I have no reason to believe that there is an intelligent agent behind nature. How do you know that what you think is design is not an illusion? You seem to be setting up a false dilemma. You want to claim that it's either God or natural processes. No, I'm not insisting that it must be either God or nature. I'm asking people to take a closer look at nature and to weigh up what they learn against the claims of the religious, especially when they claim that whole branches of science, such as evolution, are false. God is the author of nature and the laws of physics. He upholds his creation in a consistent fashion. You can only get natural processes and laws of physics by first positing a mind behind it. Why? Why do you think that that is the only possible explanation? Have you considered the possibility that you might be anthropomorphizing the universe? It seems to me that you're projecting your own attributes onto the universe. Sometimes it's hard to imagine how different things might seem from another point of view, unless you look. That's what I was trying to get at with my previous video, but you already said that you couldn't imagine it. I'd like to encourage you to take a step back and gain a wider perspective. I'm not telling you to reject your belief in God. Keep a hold of it, study it some more, but try to understand why there are so many apostates. And if somebody tells you that they left God because they wanted to sin, don't just gullibly accept that and reject what the ex-Christians themselves are saying. God can intervene with his creation in what we would call a supernatural way if he wants to. Good for him. Now, you stated that as if it were fact. Are you sure that it isn't just something you believe? 